In this video, we're going to be learning how to model individual components, and in this case, specifically plumbing fixtures. So here's a slide bar made by California Faucets, and instead of having a generic representation of the shower fixtures, it's really helpful to have the actual fixtures modeled so that they can be placed accurately in the People in the field do not have to make guesses as to how they're going to be installed. So with each of these, we need to decide on a basic strategy on how we're going to model it and get to it. So this one isn't that challenging. Uh, we're going to be using generally slabs and morphs are going to be our most fundamental elements, maybe an occasional a complex profile, but usually slabs and morphs are going to get us uh, a long way. So if I look at this, it's just a whole bunch of cylinders all stacked up. Here we're going to cut a hole through in a couple spots. Fairly easy stuff. So let's go ahead and begin by I'm using Control R. I'm going to graphically grab this point and this point and then force that to be 23.5 inches. And now this is roughly to scale. You also have the option to explode this and I'll show you how to do that. Sometimes that may make sense where you can edit, reshape, explode into current view, And ARCHICAD, being the amazing program that it is, does a fantastic job of turning this into vector information. Because PDFs, depending on how they're modeled, uh, start out as vector work. So now I can perfectly adjust this to the right size. 23.5 inches. Boom. And so now it's perfect. So in some cases that's helpful. In other cases, uh, it doesn't matter too much, but um, at least you have the option. Now, you know, it lost its circleness here. So go ahead and just draw a line. And we can create here. We can, it, depending on how we want to do this, if we were in uh, elevation, so we could draw a slab. And as you recall from the previous section where we were modeling with morphs, we want to take a minute and create some work planes so that we can see what we're doing. Let's see, I'll go ahead and move these over our work area. I'll put a marquee shift F3 and I'll select these and open both of them. So now I have a tab for the two sections, plan view and the 3D view. So we'll go ahead and work with slabs for a minute just to give you an example of how to do that. So if I start here and actually with the slab it's easier to draw the circle first. So if I come here, and draw that circle, and delete the polyline so we can get the circle underneath, and then F9, 23.5 inches. Actually, we don't really even need to do that. Let's let's just trace a slab here. Perfect. Now we have a slab, and we want it to be, we can come over here and measure, 0.377. Delete the circle, get the arc, 0.377 inches. We'll put it on zero. 
now we'll copy this at 23.5 inches. If we go into our marquee, we can see there are two discussion plates, so that's nice. Now we have some choices. Um, I can come in here. I'll go ahead and draw another circle with C here. And I'll delete that so I can trace a slab. And this slab should be, we'll measure over here. Tab, Control C, and you can get that value. Delete the circle, get the slab, and we'll piece that dimension right in. That's kind of a nice trick. So when we come over here, now we have this cylinder. And now slabs can't be rotated. They only stay in this orientation. So we're going to have to convert this to a morph. And now that it's a morph, we can rotate it. And this is where I like to do my little rotation cube. So this is for no other purpose except to help me get my axes of rotation. So there's my cylinder. And now I can place this in plan. So there's that bar right there. Let's move this out of the way a little bit. Perfect. And let's go ahead and create this circle. So I'll start. Yep, a little confusing where that is. So I'll go here. C for circle. Build that here. And measure the overall length of the bar. Well, it tells us it's 25 and 3 quarters, so we'll go in here, delete the circle, oops, do need the circle, control Z, need to make that into a slab, and 23.75 inches, oh, so there's that component, but now we need to rotate it, And we want to rotate it along this axis. Didn't get that right. Select the cylinder, F6, click. Select the cylinder. Oh, it's still a slab. That's why it's mad at me. So if you do that, you need to convert to more for it's not going to let you rotate it. Now I can hit F6. Go from here. Here. I can move this up to there. We could do a little chamfer here if we want, although I think it's so small it doesn't matter. Interesting. Did I not get the height right? So we can pull this up. Oh, I did 23 and 3 quarters, it's 25 and 3 quarters. So we'll just pull it. And 2 inches. Now it's right on. Then some round off error, but for this, you know, it's... Not an issue at all. Clean up some of this line work. Now we need these guys, and the diameter of this is 0 0.710. So we'll draw a circle. 0 0.710. Not gonna work. 
0.710 inches. But we need to, eh, actually, let's do this. We really want to know the radius. So 0.355. And in this case, we're going to want it to be a minimum of 2 inches. Slab. inches and these actually can stay slabs for right now we'll put that there copy it down the same 23.5 inches okay now these are all out of plane but if we go into our sections, and sometimes you may have to draw some lines when it's when it's turned into a morph. Sometimes it loses its center and stuff. I often draw some reference lines at an angle so I am clear what it is. This does not have a center point anymore, so I'll All right, give it one. So take this, a five, find that center. Now that's centered there. Bring this whole thing down a little closer. Here's our standoff. Copy this down. I already did that, but we copied the circle, so let's. Twenty-three. Point five. This is in our way. We'll just move it. So that's good. That's good. Now we need to go back into 2D and see what this offset is. So two and three quarters outside to outside. No problem. Line offset. 2.75 inches. Yeah, let's grab this one too. And we just need to get these guys. Over into the centers. Okay, perfect. And the last thing we want to do is I know a little bit more about this. So we have a 5 8 hole. So point six two five. So another trick is six two five divided by two six two five divided by two thousand. Not work. Okay, uh, point five inches, and uh, 
there's that. Make that a slab. Oranges is fine. And then I'll want a 3D. I'm gonna rotate this. If I had to convert it to a morph. F6. F6. Gotta find that morph. There it is. And put it right in here. And we have not an uncommon issue where we lose our center. That's darn close. I'm not going to worry about it. Got to make sure I'm moving the right stuff. Okay. I was moving the wrong piece. And I like to use a semicolon that gives me the center with two clicks. We're going to need to pull into this. So that's not a morph. So we're going to convert it to a morph. Pull it up so it's inside. Convert to a morph. Use the pull, pull it up inside. There's our cutter. This looks good. We're centered there. We're going to take this and this, and we're going to do a Boolean traction from this guy. There's my hole. Now I think I'll look in here. We have this little dial here, which is a real small radius. Draw that circle in. Just to show another approach, we can just make that directly a morph we use the extrude we know we're going to want it to be about an inch we can morph magic wand Pull it up one inch. Use our views to get it in the right spot. I didn't do that before, but no reason you can't rotate in a section as well. Even though that wasn't the direction I wanted to go. Yeah, let's rotate this again. And 
Move this back there. Rotate it. Oops. Rotate it again. And this stuff is definitely eyeball worthy. Boolean union. Now we can clean this up. That's a slab. Slab. Over to morph. So we need to get all these into morphs. Morph, 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 nope. morph, morph, morph. And I'd like to keep that as a unit. Perfect. Now let's prop this up. Here it is in plan. That's our hole. And I think Probably a good idea to change the finish. Some stainless. All right, and that's the first component. And, you know, it didn't take that long, but we have something we can use over and over and over again, put in our standard library, good to go. So while we're at this, let's go ahead and get these over here and delete this so we can move on. So here's our other part. Let's go ahead and resize this. And graphically, get it close first. Five point two five. Get it over in our work area. Here's our rotation cube, and we can just go ahead and get started. Let's start by making the stainless steel. 5.25 by 5.25. Draw a line in the center. Rough out. the center and of course we could blow up the DWG if we were so inclined but for something like this I'm not even going to bother 
getting those dimensions right. Um, now, this particular shape here lends it well, lends itself well to a revolve. We'll get a lot more detail out of it. So I'm going to draw some lines. Would explode the PDF, but the level of accuracy of this just isn't critical. And even this, do we want to make this round? I will, but you know, it makes the model a lot heavier when you do that. And all right. Now we can go to morph, revolve, magic wand. It's tracing the right shape. Click, click, 360, boom. That was not what I wanted. Try that again. I'm not sure that's doing. Let's see. Yeah, we're obviously getting something we don't want. Let me move this out of the way for a minute. Put two feet. There we go. Just couldn't tell it was trying to roll bulb too much. So there's that. That looks much better. Then. Trace this guy, some lines. Intersect that. Try point one two five. Perfect. Excellent. And this is right around point seven. We also need this handle. Close enough and we Get this out of the way because it keeps trying to trace it. And this is bench. And the last thing we need to do is make this a slab of 3 sixteenths. And now we have all our parts.
I don't think it's critical to put those joining pieces in. It's up to you if you want to. Um, So in 3D, we have and now we got to use our tools here to get everything in alignment. We take this guy, move it down to the center. Take this guy, move it down to center. Take this, and move it to center. Oh, that's our rotation cube. This guy needs to get rotated. So let's go ahead and do that in 3D. F6, it's a square, so outer. Convert it to a morph so we can rotate it. Here's our morph. Now we've got to get this height. Move this guy so it's centered this plane. And now we just gonna rotate this. And look how nice that looks. All dimensionally accurate. We can Boolean union that thing. Even though the pieces aren't intersecting, you can still union it. And now we can take this shower valve, move it down. And that's the back side. Let's go ahead and flip this around. If we wanted to union this, it will give us this line here, which would be nice. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to F9 this, make a copy. I'm just going to select one, Boolean, subtract from that. So now I have this, and I put a hole in there. And so you get that edge, which makes it look a lot better. 
it still gives me the option to move this up and down. Looks better. Have the valve over here. And that's essentially how you go about modeling plumbing fixtures. So it's pretty easy, kind of fun, and once you get a library of these, then you have many, many, many to choose from and use. And so the next thing I'm going to do is do the handheld here, and I'll do the spout, and then I'll do a hose that connects from the handheld up into here. But um, save that for another video. Thanks.